And our speaker, I'm honored to introduce him for today. Um, he is Philip, Professor Philip A. Alviola. Prof. Alviola is an associate professor seven at the Animal Biology Division, Institute of Biological Sciences here at UPLB, currently working on his PhD by research forest biological sciences also at UPLB. His scope of research in, uh, undertakings includes bat ecology and virology, mammalian taxonomy. He is appointed as a research associate and visiting scientist at the Field Museum of Natural History in Chicago, USA, and of course, a curator for mammals and other wildlife here at UPLB Museum of Natural History. For his significant research outputs, he was awarded by the DOST, National Academy of Science and Technology, the Outstanding Young Scientist of the Philippines for, Phil, uh, for Wildlife Biology uh, in 2017. And uh, the year after, he was selected by the Asian scientists to be part of the top 100 Asian scientists, a crop of 100 prize-winning Asian researchers, academicians, innovators, and business leaders from across the Asia-Pacific region. Friends, let us all welcome Professor Philip Alviola. <coughs> Maraming Philip? salamat po, uh, Sir Florante. Maraming salamat din po sa lahat po ng aking butihing uh, advisors for attending. So magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Uh, good afternoon. So for today, I will be presenting the chapter 3 of my uh, PhD dissertation. So the title is uh, Echolocation Calls of Insectivorous Bats in the Karst Forest of Polillo Island. So gaya po ng sinabi ni, ni Sir June, Dr. Lit, na ito po ay aking uh, third graded seminar. Okay, po. Uh, what's what's the chapter objectives of my my uh, this uh, chapter three? So first is to characterize uh, bat echolocation calls in terms of its spectral. So spectral include uh, frequency, uh, in start, end, and peak, and temporal, uh, which includes duration and interval uh, elements. Uh, number two is uh, I would like to compare the polillo bat echolocation calls from different localities in the Philippines with uh, existing call libraries. So this include published and uh, unpublished studies all within the Philippines. Okay, so what's an echolocation? So, so essentially it's a physiological process for locating objects uh, by means of sound waves reflected back to the emitter by the objects. So this is, uh, echolocation is used for orientation, uh, obstacle avoidance, uh, for foraging or food procurement, and of course, social interactions. Uh, inter and interspecies uh, interactions. So some of the prominent examples uh, within the animal kingdom that possess echolocation would be your two twills and uh, including dolphins. So essentially what they do is the, they move the air between air spaces, uh, between the air spaces or sinuses in the head. And the echo nila would be received by the lower jaw. Uh, oil birds and swiftlets also produce uh, echolocation. So by uh, producing clicks, uh, generated by the syringe, which is part of, uh, found in the in the, the larynx of the bird. So the, the clicks that are generated by these birds are, are audible, so ranging from three to ten kilohertz. Uh, old world fruit bats are also capable of producing echolocation by tongue clicking, but it's only found in the genus Rosettus. So this is the Geoffroy's uh, Rosette. Uh, it's also audible, so up to around fifteen kilohertz as well. And then, of course, uh, echolocation is um, expressed in its uh, advanced form, uh, possessed by microchiropteran bats. Uh, the, 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 the echolocation call is produced by the larynx, it's laryngeal, and it's also ultrasonic as well. So this means that it's beyond human hearing, so more than 20 kilohertz. Okay, so this is an example of, a, of an echolocation um, call. So, so what we're seeing here in the echolocation call in microcorrupter and bats is that uh, echolocation calls can be visualized in spectrograms as we are seeing here in this graph. So in the spectrograms, you have the frequency, which is uh, expressed in kilohertz, and your time uh, or duration, which is uh, expressed in milliseconds. So um, the echolocation call of a bat uh, has several components, has three components. First would be the pulse or the call, <clears throat> and then you also have a constant frequency component. So this term as the CF. So this is a single frequency signature at long duration. So single frequency, selling frequency, so so left hand of the graph. So single frequency. And you also have uh, the frequency modulated component. 
So essentially sa uh, ito yung parang vertical uh, component nung 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 ng pulse. So essentially sa broad frequency sweep. So multiple frequencies at a very short duration and sometimes simultaneous in production ng ng frequency mod uh, ng, ng ng frequency. Okay. Um more on echolocation costs for microchiropter and bats. So bat calls are broadly classified into three groups. So in the first part of the, the, the spectrogram, you have the quasi-constant frequency or the QCF. So wherein you have the, the very long component of the, 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 the constant frequency. And then you also have a very short <clears throat> frequency modulated component. And then you also have the second one is the frequency, frequency modulated or the FM. So it's just it's a very broad sweep, uh, multiple frequency uh, emissions at a very short duration, sometimes simultaneously. And then you have this constant frequency or predominantly uh, CF. So it's a single uh, predominant dominated by a single frequency. And then you also have a very short uh, FM component. Oops. Yeah. Right, so echolocation calls in, in microchiropteran bats can be species specific or even uh, genera specific. So as an example here by Worley et al, 2014, uh, when they did a survey in Western Ghats, India. So there is a level of discrimination, level of, uh, you can actually discriminate uh, some of the echolocation calls uh, by species or at the generic level. Uh, sometimes um, there's the echolocation calls can be uh, can have variations. It can have can be due to several behavioral contexts. Let's say, for example, in this uh, in the picture that's shown here, uh, when a bat is foraging, so it's a search phase. So it's a search phase uh, is just looking for 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 prey. So the the, the echolocation signature is different. And then when you uh, when the bat uh, already located the prey and then is trying to approach. So the, the distance between the pulse um, gets shorter. And then when it actually approached the, the, the prey for a kill, so the, 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 the pulse distance of the, or, or the interval gets shorter still. So what we, what we call here is the, the, the feeding bus, the terminal bus phase. And of course, echolocation cost can be different depending on the, the geographical location which I, I will actually show you here in, in my, my, my seminar. And then of course, you, the, the, uh, the manner of how we record the calls, so which uh, I will show them later. And um, of course, uh, there's also a lack of comprehensive call libraries. That's very apparent, definitely here in the Philippines, but of course, across Southeast Asia as well. Although some countries uh, like for example, uh, Thailand, has a uh, quite numerous uh, extensive uh, call libraries. And uh, we're now seeing the utility of echolocation calls for taxonomic purpose uh, in determining species boundaries or, or sometimes disputing um, species complexes. And of course, with, with the, if we know the echolocation calls of, the, of several species, we can use this for species monitoring. Right, so what are the studies of uh, bat acoustics here in the Philippines. So it all started uh, in 2001 by Jody Sedla. So when she did her, her PhD thesis here in Mount Makiling and also produced uh, several uh, echolocation call sig um, uh, calls from, from, from several bats uh, in the mountain. And then this was followed. Uh, uh, there was a big um, gap uh, in between with the next publication by Jody as well, when he when she produced a, a micro a study or survey of microbats from Bohol, and with it uh, also came several uh, echolocation characterization, and then in 2019, uh, very recently by by Frex de Macolangan, which is also a uh, an alumni of UP Los Banos, when he did uh, cave emergence studies in in Mount Makiling, and there's. Uh, and also produce a uh, call characterization of at least I think four species of micro bats. And then the most recent publication on echolocation calls of bats uh, came from Amina Amberong in 2021. So she did a study on the micro bats from Bulacan, specifically in Punang Cave. So to date, this is the most complete um, 
most extensive study on bat echolocation calls from Philippine bats. And uh, Amina is also a, uh, an alumni of UPLD. Right, so go, we're going now to the, to the method. So uh, similar to, to my, 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 my previous chapters. So my, our, my sampling site, so I, I, I captured and recorded bat echolocation calls from in, in Patung, Patung Bato Cave Complex. And uh, I did this back in April uh, uh, in, in three separate locations in April, October, and between November and December, 2019. And uh, we captured bats at uh, several places, so including cave entrances and uh, within the karst forest interior in, in, in trails, in open areas, or forest gaps. And we mainly use mist nets to, to capture the, the, the bats, and then we record the calls. So for voucher call recordings, so what we did here is uh, shown here in the picture is that we have a bat detector. It's called the Peterson M500384. So I handheld the bat. So this picture was taken from our bat, bat virus research uh, in Mount McKinley. But essentially, the, the, the process is the same when we, we, when we record the, 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 the calls from, from these bats. So for rhinolophids and Hippocyderus diadema, so Hippocyderus diadema is the largest insectivorous bat in the Philippines. So we usually, <clears throat> uh, it's handheld. Uh, <clears throat> And then for Vesper tulionids and small hypocidrids, so we use an, uh, a tent as an enclosure. For, uh, so, so we have a tent there that sleeps, I think uh, it can sleep around four person or three persons. And then we let go of the bat and then we record its, its call. So all of the voucher calls that we recorded are stored in duplicates, so in laptop and an external drive. So what we do is, um, so, so the bat detector is attached to, the, to a laptop, and then we try to see if there are uh, uh, calls that are emitted from the bat. And usually what we do is uh, we record at least five straight clear pulses uh, per bat individual, as shown here in the picture from the, from the spectrogram. And aside from recording the calls, we also take uh, biometrics and uh, we determine the gender of the, of the bat. And all of the, the the calls that we use for analysis, that I use for analysis, were from adults only. Okay, so for call characterization, so we now have the, the recorded the call. So what do we do with that? So I, uh, we, we derive uh, seven um, parameters from, from the call themselves, from the calls. Uh, these are first uh, the start frequency, it's indicated here in the number. So you have the single pulse. Uh, this is from uh, Rhinolophid. So number one is this, this start frequency. So frequency value registered at the onset of the call. So the start of the call. And then um, end frequency, which is, uh, of course, the frequency value registered at the end of the call. So we also have the peak frequency. So as indicated here, number three. So uh, all the, 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 the pulses are color coded. So depending on the energy of that call, energy uh, as expressed as decibels. So uh, color yellow, so these have varying energy levels. So the red one would indicate uh, the highest energy level. So, so peak frequency or PF uh, just means that frequency at the highest energy of the call. And then we also have minimum frequency, uh, which, is, uh, which is not shown here. So this is the lowest frequency value registered in the call. So essentially what, uh, what's been, been doing here is that uh, you just point the cursor on, the, on several parts of the call and then it will register at the, the bottom of the, the, the program uh, uh, what, what are the values. And then we also have maximum frequency or F max, which is the, the highest frequency value. This is different from the F, uh, from the peak frequency we're in. Uh, the peak frequency denotes maximum energy. And then we also have duration. So this is number four, so duration of each pulse. So this is the oscillation time between the start and the end of the call. So, and then the interpulse interval. So the, essentially it's just the time elapsed between two consecutive calls. Okay, so what are, uh, for call analysis, so, so we use two kinds of software. 
So first is the bat sound, which actually comes as a software which comes with a with a bat detector itself. And then we also have this the, the C wave or the sound emission analyzer wave. Okay. For the statistical analysis, so I use um, several um, statistical tools uh, in order to, to characterize uh, the, the echolocation calls of the, the bats that I've captured. So these uh, uh, statistical tests are standard uh, measures. We've been, been well documented, it's been used in, in practically almost all publications dealing with call characterization. So first, of course, uh, descriptive, uh, which is mean or and standard error. So all of the, the, the call parameters are expressed as mean and with their standard error. And then I also use t-test or, uh, or man with me uh, test for, for non-parametric. So the determine significant difference between bat gender. So it's different between males and female of the same species. And then uh, I, I use multivariate discriminant function analysis or what we term as DFA. So this, this uh, multivariate analysis uh, verifies the specificity of the calls to each bat species. So essentially it tries to uh, cross validate if the, the, the parameters that we use are, can be identified to the species level. And then from that, uh, from that multivariate DFA, uh, the, the Wilkes lambda is, uh, is also derived. So this Wilkes lambda determines the strength of each call parameter in discriminating bat species. So right, uh, what I use is I uh, have a total of seven call parameters. So this Wilkes lambda will tell you which of these parameters are, uh, are uh, determines of which can be used uh, with the highest uh, probability of, of identifying that bat species. And then from, from there, I also use canonical correspondence analysis. So essentially it's a visual representation of the calls from different localities. So I use the scatter plot from this. And then other tests, uh, Shapiro Wilkes for, for testing the normality and for box M test as well, and Spearman rank correlation. So this these, uh, statistical test comes with the, with, the, with the DFA test. And I used PAST uh, software and then IBM SPSS for, for, the, for the DFA. Right, so this is the results of the uh, uh, of my uh, call characterization. So this table. So so what we have here is the spectral and temporal call characteristics from the ten cave, uh, ten, 10 species of insectivorous bats from putting Bato. So you have here the start frequency, end frequency, peak, uh, f min, f max duration, and interpulse interval. So. Um, there are some species that have a very high number of, of sample size, like Hypsidaris crinatus, up to 26 individuals, uh, Hypsidaris, uh, several Hypsidaris species, uh, Miniopterus australis has 25, but we also have, I also captured very few uh, number of species like uh, Miniopterus shribersi, we have four individuals, uh, Rhinolophus philippinensis and Rufus have less than 10 individuals. So all in all, I kept, uh, calls were derived from 174 bat individuals. And uh, t-test or man with, the, man, man with the test per species indicate that there's no significant variation between the success. And for those, uh, so I pulled all the, the samples uh, for male and female, and including for those that have very low uh, number like uh, Minyopter Schreiber side. Right, so here, I'm showing you the call parameters for Hipposideridae. So under the family Hipposideridae. So I captured three species. So there's Coronatus, which has a forearm of 49 to 53 millimeters. Uh, and then you have Hipposideris pygmaeus, which is a uh, uh, lot smaller. And then you also have Hipposideris diadema, which is the biggest uh, or the largest uh, Hipposideris or insectivorous bat in the Philippines. So as you can see here, um, the, 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 the call parameters are generally higher in the Pseudaris coronatus and then, um, and then followed suit by Hypsidaris pygmaeus and Hypsidaris diadema. So for example, for peak frequency, uh, Hypsidaris coronatus has 150 kilohertz in peak frequency. Yeah? Hypsidaris pygmaeus has uh, 108 uh, kilohertz and then Hypsidaris diadema, which is a uh, bigger species, has, has the lowest uh, peak frequency. 
So for all uh, parameters, uh, there's this um, uh, succeeding le uh, succeeding level of 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 uh, values. Uh, and uh, these are all classified as quasi constant frequency or QCF call type. So using a uh, scatter plot, uh, my DF, uh, the DFA and then the Wilkes lambda for, for the hypocidarids, as you can see here in the, the scatter plot, so there's clear separation for the three species. So, and then uh, cross valid, um, uh, use, uh, per, per, by performing the, the discriminant function analysis, as you can see here in the table. So 100% of the cross validated group cases are cor were correctly classified. So as you can see here in the percentage, 100% uh, of the hypocidaris coronatus were uh, correctly identified. Hypocidaris diadema as well in the second, 100% uh, classification, and hypocidaris pygmaeus, 100% classification. So um, the, the, the software uh, didn't have any problems of, 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 of confusing uh, all the, the three species. And uh, the Wilkes lambda, uh, test which shows you which of the the parameters are has uh, the primary parameters that can be used in distinguishing the the bat species. Uh, these are the start frequency with uh, 0 0.001 and the peak frequency with uh, 0 0.003. So the lower the Wilkes lambda test, so that shows you that that parameter is is um, best suited for for identifying that uh, the bat species. So now for uh, rhinolophidae. So uh, actually, ca we can actually captured four different species. So I shown here uh, three different species. So for rhinolophus arcuatus, which uh, has a, uh, a higher um, uh, pole parameters. So it has a forearm of 43 to 47 millimeters. And then uh, slight uh, lower would be your rhinolophus rufus. Uh, it's, uh, it's a much bigger uh, bat. So with forearm about 68 to 73 species. And you have at the lowest would be your rhinolophus philippinensis with a forearm of 51 to 57. So what it also shows here is the, is the clear uh, and gradual um, lowering of values for, for several of the, of the, the call parameters. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the duration is much higher for Rhinolophus philippinensis and uh, actually the even with the pulse interval. So this has a longer call compared to the rest of the, the other Rhinolophids that we captured. But nonetheless, for the peak frequency, uh, Rhinolophus arcuatus has the highest and then gradual uh, succeeding with, with Rhinolophus rufus and Rhinolophus philippinensis. And judging by the call shape or call type, these are all constant frequency call type as well. So repeating the process, uh, looking into the scatter plot, the DFA and the Wilkes Lambda for rhinolophids. So as you can see here, um, this one is um, rhinolophus arcuatus. This one is rhinolophus philippinensis. And then, uh, so there's clear se separation between rhinolophus arcuatus and philippinensis. But in the middle, uh, there are overlaps in terms of values. And this one actually, uh, what, what's happening here is that there are two phonic types of rhinolophus macrotis, uh, we designated as uh, RMP1 and RMP2. So rhinolophus uh, macrotis, uh, phonic type one, phonic type two. So they actually come into two types. So the, the first one is uh, the peak frequency is about 46.88 kilohertz. And the, the second phonotype is uh, 39.06. And what's happening here is that uh, Rhinolophus macrotis phonotype two is an overlap with Rhinolophus rufus. So what happens uh, with that is uh, we do not uh, did not achieve hundred um, uh, percent correct classification as as you can see here. So there's at least one individual of Rhinolophus rufus at the, the table that was misidentified as Rhinolophus macrotis uh, phonic type two. But nonetheless, it still it still has a very very high uh, uh, classification rate. Uh, probably what's happening here is that because uh, we have 
relatively low sample size for for rhinolophus macrotis, uh, something about five or six individuals. So uh, we, I would expect uh, these values to um, to to, uh, to normalize uh, once we have uh, much more samples from rhinolophus macrotis. And then for the Wilkes lambda test, it uh, shows that end and peak rinse, end and peak frequency are the the primary parameters in distinguishing uh, bat species. And now for the, the last uh, family of bats that we've captured. So we also got, uh, documented three species of Vesper talionids. So we have Neopters australis with, uh, which actually the smallest of the, the Vesper, the Vesper talionids that we captured, followed by Neopters schriebersi, uh, relatively medium in, in size. And then we also have myotis macrotarsus. So what's happening here is that there is a successive uh, lowering of, of values starting from Neopters australis all across the uh, all across the call parameters. So for example, for, for peak frequency, uh, Neopters australis has the highest uh, peak frequency with almost 70 kilohertz, followed by Neopters schriebersi with 51 or and then with myotis macrotarsus with 39.21. So it's, uh, as you can see here, it's uh, clearly distinguishable from, from each other. And these calls are what you term as frequency modulated, wherein this is dominated by broad frequency sweeps in a very, very short duration. This is as opposed to constant frequency wherein you only have uh, almost a one, one frequency level. And, and repeating the process. So as you can see here, there's, there's clear separation among the Cree Vesper Talionid. So, so very clear, there's uh, for, for Minyaptus australis and Shrebersi and Myotis macrotarsus. And uh, expectedly, so we, have, we had 100% of the cross-validated group cases correctly classified. And uh, the lambda, Wilkes Lambda test indicated that and uh, and uh, minimum frequency are the primary par parameters in distinguishing bat species. Right, so I'm now gonna show you uh, what are the, the, the studies that have been published here in the Philippines on bat acoustics. So this is the table. Uh, so, so there are several species that we now have uh, echolocation calls from different localities, of course in Polilio, so what I'm doing right now, and we also have uh, work from Bulacan, from, from Amina Amberong, uh, 2021, Mount Makiling, uh, from Jody Sedlock, and then from Bohol in 2014. Uh, unfortunately, these are all, all the, 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 the publications, work that has been done in, in, um, in bat acoustics. Uh, so you can see here, uh, there's Kurenatus, there's a difference of six kilohertz between the two. Um, and then for diadema, it's relatively more or less the same across all the localities. Uh, Hypocidaris pygmaeus. So uh, Polilia and Bulacan have almost similar values, but if you compare it with, with Bohol, uh, it's a difference of, of almost 20 or 15 kilohertz. For Rhinolophus arquatus, it's relatively the same with a few plus or minus uh, two or three kilohertz. For Rhinolophus macroti, so I've just shown you that we found two phonic types from Polilio Island, the, the higher and the lower phonic type. And then what's very surprising is from Bulacan, it's almost twice the, uh, almost twice the value with 74 kilohertz. So these are peak frequencies. And then from Mount Makiling, so um, much, much nearer to, to Polilio and Bohol as well, but still there's a difference particularly with, with the, 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 the second phonic type, which is 39.1, which spells the difference like uh, 12 or 13 kilohertz. And then for Rhinolophus philippinensis, relatively the same, Rhinolophus rufus, a uh, oh, difference of two uh, kilohertz, Minyoptus australis and uh, Minyoptus rubersi, relatively the same, but except for, um, the difference be, uh, in Maki, between Makiling and Polilio Island, which is uh, around like six uh, kilohertz. So what we also have to note is that uh, on the manner that uh, they, they record the calls, 
from, from the bets or the manner how the vouchers, voucher costs were taken. So for Palillo, I used tent and I, I recorded the bets from, from tent and also uh, handheld. For Bulacan, it's all solely, uh, they use tent uh, only. For Mount Makiling and Bohol, it's both. Uh, they use tent and uh, held the bat as well. So uh, there are there are some uh, indications that values may differ uh, when 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 depending on, on the manner of how how the voucher costs were, were taken. So sometimes uh, there are some reports that um, values taken inside the tent tend to be higher in terms of frequency uh, because of the, the the very enclosed space. So the the return signal would 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 would, would tend to uh, the, the the returning signal coming from the around the tent would force the bat to 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 emit signals that are very very high or rel relatively high and uh, of course the duration and the, the 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 pulse interval as well would be shortened as opposed to if you're handheld or if the bat is in free flight right so I'm also going to discuss here. Uh, because of the, the relatively few studies that have been done on bat acoustics here in the Philippines. So I also made use and compare uh, the results of our, of our study with unpublished studies on, on, in the Philippines. And the late James Alvarez uh, actually had recalled um, uh, when he was in the museum, well, he made several recordings in, he made recordings in several localities across the Philippines. Uh, he had at least 10 uh, recording. Uh, uh, he had made recordings from at least 10 different sites, uh, uh, mostly on Luzon Island, uh, Santa, Teresi, Santa Teresita in Cagayan, in Pangasinan, in Benguet, uh, Mount Makiling, of course, in Paquil and in Pulillo or in Bordeos. Uh, of course, when we, when we have field work together uh, for, for museum or in other, uh, or other research, so we, we also do some recordings. And then in in uh, in Bicol Peninsula, uh, he also recorded uh, in Mount Belusan, in Sibuyan, where he did his thesis. And then when we went to Sibaliw in Panay Island, uh, where he recorded bats uh, bats there and uh, on Cebu. And it probably has uh, one of the most extensive call library prior to that, uh, most extensive call library in the Philippines. So so I made use of that. Uh, I. I uh, we revisited his his, uh, his data and his recordings, and we derived the the parameters from from his recordings. So here uh, I present two graphs from from two species. From uh, this one is from Hipposideros daidima. So we have recordings from several localities, uh, from Cagayan, Cebu, Mount Makiling, Pakil, Pangasinan, and of course, here in, uh, in Pulillo Island, uh, my, my thesis in Pulillo Island. As you can see, there's, uh, um, there's lots of overlaps among the localities. So um, our DFA results are uh, only to 58% correct classification. And you can see here, uh, there's no extensive divergence among localities. So there's no clear separation. So meaning that uh, the values within uh, among these localities uh, have overlaps. So, Essentially, in terms of echolocation calls, uh, of course, if you have uh, bearing, I mean, if you have several, several samples, I mean, uh, more or less, they're generally the same. And we also have here for Rhinolophus arcuatus uh, from several localities, uh, um, Benguet in, 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 uh, in Cordillera, of course, you have Cagayan, Cebu, Makiling. Uh, we also included here Panay and Sorsogon. And as you can see here, um, there's also overlaps in, in terms of, uh, of the call parameters. And uh, we relatively had low correct classification success with only 60.8%. So this means that it has only a, a success of 60% in classifying the bad calls according to their localities. So, which also means that uh, the, the, the parameters themselves would have would show overlaps among these localities. And uh, what also shows here is that the, the Cebu population of the Rhinolophus arcuatus are somewhat different so from the rest of the arcuatus from the from, from the, the, the all the sampling sites. 
but definitely uh, from the Polilio, uh, the, the, the population from Polilio is clearly in overlap, overlap with other uh, localities. And for Rhinolophus macrotis, I've shown uh, I've shown you earlier that uh, here in uh, in Polilio have we have two phonic types. So uh, James only had a sample from Mount Makiling in here in Laguna, and what shows here is that uh, there's separation between the the phonic type two, as you can see, uh, indicated here with the the, the yellow uh, yellow circles. Uh, there's clear separation from uh, the Mount Makiling population, but on the other hand, the phonic type two is much closer to the Mount Makiling population than to the to the the, the Polilio Island phonic type two uh, population, as you can see here in the spectrogram. So the Polilio Island one phonic type one is closer in terms of peak frequency, or or most of the or most of the the call parameters. As you compare it with uh, the Polilio Island phonic type two, which is uh, relatively has lower values. Uh, for Hipposideros uh, pygmaeus, um, we have samples only. For, uh, James only had samples from from Paki Laguna, and what shows here is there's clear separation between the Polilio Island population and the Paki uh, population and. It's very, very apparent here in the in the, the spectrogram, uh, and looking at the, the the values. So, for example, for start frequency, um, 107 for Polilio Island, Pakil Laguna, 52, uh, and frequency almost three times the, the value, 19 versus 39. Peak frequency, uh, twice the value. So we have uh, 108 in Laguna. Only 53 kilohertz in 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 Pakil. Uh, for the duration and pulse intervals, they're they're relatively uh, they're generally the same. And then for Rhinolophus philippinensis, so James had uh, uh, voucher calls from Cagayan and Mount Makiling, and this shows. Um, <clears throat> The, the Cagayan and Mount Makiling population is re relatively almost similar to each other, as you can see here with the in the, the spectrogram. And then for Polilio Island, it's uh, your separation. It's clearly separated from the two populations, and this is very apparent in the in the the, the parameters or the values of the parameters uh, for for start frequency. Uh, they're relatively the same, 34, 35 versus for Polilio, it's about 21.91. And frequency is almost the same as well. Mas mababa sa Polilio. And then of course, for the for the peak frequency. Um, so we have 45 for Mount Makiling, 42 for Cagayan, uh, 28 for Polilio Island. So in, in terms of duration, so Polilio Island and Cagayan is relatively the same. Uh, Mount Makiling has a shorter duration, Paul has a shorter duration. And then for pulse interval, um, Polilio Island and Makiling has uh, relatively the same, and has, but Cagayan has a much, much lower, almost three times, uh, oh, the value of, uh, of for, for pulse interval. Okay, so for, for summary and conclusion, so what I've shown here is that uh, I've now, We've now generated a call library for at least 10 species here uh, for Polilio Island. And uh, practically all of the publications that for the Philippines, which, uh, which has been done on bat acoustics, all unanimously or consensusly agree that there is a need for to generate call libraries for, for, for insectivorous bats. We, uh, for the Philippines, we have about seven, um, around 54 or 55 species of insectivorous bats. And uh, I believe there's about like less than 50% of those have um, have echolocation call characterization and definitely from, from, from very, very few localities. And our, uh, my data would also show that uh, for Polilis that uh, we had a very high classification success 
for all species uh, up to 97.7%, uh, with only a few exceptions. Uh, for example, for Rhinolophus rufus, wherein there's one individual that was uh, mis uh, uh, incorrectly identified as Rhinolophus macrotis. So it's the only one individual, but nonetheless, uh, it's really a uh, very, very high classification success. And my, uh, my comparisons of Polillo Island with other conspecifics from other localities would show that uh, there are a few taxa that exhibit call divergence. Uh, although there are some like there's Daedema and Arquitus, which uh, had extensive overlaps with each other, but there are all males which uh, exhibited uh, uh, no overlap or exhibited a wide call divergence. Uh, internet connection is stable. I apologize for that. Yeah. So, so the implication here is that although uh, we have very few published studies on bat acoustics in the Philippines, and if we're going to use uh, bat echolocation calls for for taxonomic studies, we need to have um, extensive call libraries. So, I mean, for doing surveys, uh, let's say bat surveys or wildlife surveys. It would be worth our while if we can also perform, uh, if we can record the voucher calls of these uh, these insectivorous bats. And uh, I also need to stress the importance of you know we need to standardize uh, the manner of recording of uh, voucher calls. As you can see uh, in the table where I compared it with different studies that have been done in the Philippines, uh, the biases or the the, the differences might can be attributable or some, some of it can be attributable to, to how it was uh, recorded. So we need to document all recording types, uh, if it's handheld or enclosure or if it's done in free flight. But nonetheless, um, all, several publications or well, practically all publications that have been done on bat acoustics worldwide would state at the onset that the manner in which they, they recorded uh, the cause. So as long as we, we, we mention or we write in the paper or we write in the publication that how it was recorded, um, that would uh, provide us with a guide at least in, in using the, uh, so, some, uh, some form of a standardization in, 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 uh, in comparing uh, echolocation calls. And then uh, Call libraries, I mean, uh, uh, acquiring call lab libraries or accumulating call libraries, uh, this will be prove very, very useful for, for bat monitoring in varying landscape. I mean, if you, can, if you would like to compare uh, bat community or insectivorous bat community between forest versus non-forest, um, recording or monitoring of, of bat calls or uh, surveying of bats using echolocation calls, uh, would be would be easy. I mean, would be easier. So this would be a non-invasive um, type of uh, of method. And of course, we can also monitor population uh, of bats in in caves as well. And <clears throat> and uh, there's also been a utility of using um, calls or advertisement calls from from insects as well. Particularly special for those insects that are exhibit ultrasonic. Uh, emission of calls, like for example, catedids, moths, wherein sometimes they can reach up to about 40 kilohertz, so beyond um, beyond human hearing. So it will be uh, the utility of using um, ultrasonic recorders uh, can can, uh, can be used not only for bats but for for other uh, ultrasonic call emitting animals as well, such as insects. Okay, so before I end, so how will I use my call library? Um, right, so the, my, in my, dish, my dissertation in, ch in chapter four, it's entitled uh, Bat Emergence Patterns in Putting Bato Cave for Polillo Island. So uh, as you can see here, uh, I will use the gen uh, my, my generated call library to identify the emerging bats from cave three, four. So as you can see here, this is the cave, the opening of the cave. And then there's a stick here, and meron po dito ng bat detector. Nanaka, we have a very long cable, and it's uh, connected to a laptop. And then from here, uh, using a bat detector that has a full spectrum capability, 
you can actually record uh, multiple species uh, with multiple frequency signatures at the same time or simultaneously, like for example, on this spectrogram. So we can actually identify two uh, different species uh, with Rhinolophus arcuatus and this one, the lower, um, lower uh, frequency values. Uh, this one is Rhinolophus rufus. So I can identify them to the species because I have a, a call library which have extensive voucher calls. Uh, and then this one is a sample of a graph of what's uh, what will happen in uh, what's how the data is presented. So as you can see here, uh, this is the <clears throat> differing uh, emergence uh, of the several uh, different species of bats in in that cave. So the the, the graph, the the axis here, the y-axis, the proportion of the minutes present. So and then the minutes after emergence. So I can actually track here and you know, using, a, and definitely I've identified which species are they use, uh, by looking at the, the spectrogram. So I know for a fact that uh, when did uh, a certain species emerge and are they emerging all throughout the, 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 the during exit? And, uh, and I can also determine if, uh, if the, their, their numbers are decreasing as you as the the, the emergence, the time of emergence is uh, or the, the duration of the emergence starts to, to, to progress. And I can also see here uh, when it's the time that uh, some species have emerged and you know, so relative to, to other species. Okay. So Dito po nagtatapos ang aking talk, so I'm just going to uh, provide special thanks to, to, to the Office of the Vice Chancellor for research and extension. Uh, this this, this uh, part of the, the research was funded by the UPLB Basic Research, um, which was awarded to the Museum of Natural History. So special thanks to, to, to Sir Florante Cruz, who actually uh, oversee the administ administrative aspect of the of the, the basic research uh, project. Uh, Dr. JC Gonzalez, who was uh, the director at the time uh, during the, when the, the basic research project was awarded. And of course, to, to, to Kirk Tarai, who's a uh, alumni of UP Los Banos. Uh, well, it started with, uh, it was the one who was, uh, who taught him how to, to, to use the bat detector. And then now he's uh, become so, so skilled in, in, in using the bat detector and the software Na siya na po yun nagtuturo sa akin. So uh, for his, uh, I'm very, very thankful to him. Very, very promising uh, prospect in his career. So I, I'm not, I'm just not sure kung ano po yung tatahakin niya. Is it bat ecology or virology? Hindi ko rin alam. Pero, so maraming salamat po. And I hope you, uh, may napulot po kayo sa aking presentation. All right. Thank you, Sir Philip. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation and congratulations. And uh, we are inviting the audience to ask our speaker on his uh, research outputs. Uh, we have a period of uh, probably 30 to 40 minutes to accommodate some of your questions. And uh, just put your questions on the chat box and I will read it. So uh, while we are waiting for, your, for the questions in the chat box, probably I could uh, start the uh, ball rolling let me just uh, change my view uh, sir if i were to look for a stored or, or an online database of uh, echolocation calls uh, in the philippines where would i where would i find it unfortunately we don't have uh, a database an online database for the philippines uh, like i mentioned so very very few studies have been done on the on bat acoustics uh, well, continuing publication. So essentially, what I'm basing it on comparison to is from the, the published uh, mm -hmm. literature itself. So, don't uh, Amina Amberong, kina Jody Sedlock. So these are just uh, one values. So mga peak frequency. So hindi ko alam yung mga raw data. So I was only able to 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 do a much in depth comparisons from unpublished studies. Yung kay James nga na because uh, well, uh, may mga information siya from the from his uh, from the museum's laptop, which is stored in the mm -hmm. museum's laptop. But otherwise, uh, we don't have an online database okay. here in the Philippines. If ever, if kung may, kung may kailangan gumawa, uh, like 
I know Senocanto. Senocanto is for bird calls, right? You could <clears throat> actually go there, be a member, upload and download your right. bird calls. Yes. But uh, uh, uh. Uh, do we have a facility right now like that? Kahit international where we could contribute your right. location uh, Yeah, I mean, we can contribute to, to uh, this our university based like yung sa Cornell, Macaulay Laboratory of Sounds. So they are actually, you know, uh, pwede sila mag-receive ng mga calls na ito. Uh, from, from the British Library of Wildlife Sounds as well. So meron din sila mga recordings uh, mga echolocation calls from around the world. Uh, here in Southeast Asia, unfortunately, wala po. But mm. the Southeast Asian Bat Conservation Research Unit, uh, headed by Tika Kingston, um, space, she's based in Texas Tech University, is now gradually uh, building up uh, call libraries across Southeast Asian region. Ang ano lang dito is very, you have to be very, very careful. Uh, you know, you have to specify what kind of bat recorder did you use. Yeah. Uh, what's the manner of it, how it's used, uh, identification of the species, and so on and so forth. Uh, in gender, nung, nung panike, and so on and so forth. All right, but, yeah. thank you. So a uh, question from um, Ma'am Desa Marie Antoinette uh, Fernandez, and uh, she's asking how much does the bat detector cost? Can you recommend some uh, those uh, budget-friendly alternatives for students who want to conduct uh, research on bat calls? I've been away with that and I have a list here. <laughs> right. Uh, the one I use, um, uh, Peterson uh, M500. Uh, this is a catalog. It's a website. Nila, it costs around 3,500 Swedish krona. So, what is it? 20,127 pesos. So, 20,000. So, the software is uh, 17,000 pesos. But when you buy the detector, um, Included na siya. And the other bat detector that I use, uh, this Dodotronic um, Ultra Mic, uh, USB Ultra Mic, mm, it's around 16,000, uh, uh, almost 17,000 pesos. So I think that's probably the, the, the cheapest uh, bat detector, yung Ultra Mic, yung USB Ultra Mic. Uh, problema nga lang dun is yung sampling rate na. So you also have to look into the Yung capabilities of the bat detector. So mm -hmm. depending on the sampling rate. May mga bat detectors kasi na they can only that can only record calls up to a certain frequency. So yung know, the tronic uh, around 125 kilohertz lang. So marami kang mga pwede hindi mare record ng mga other species, uh, particularly mga hipposiderots, which can can uh mga frequency lang hanggang 150 kilohertz and so forth. So best uh bang uh best buck for your you know for your money, um I would choose the the, the Peterson M five hundred. It's around mm -hmm. twenty thousand pesos. Ang um, problema lang dito is of course may may wala pang VAT, may mga customs pa. So lalo na pagka mag pagka government funded yung project, minsan pinapatungan ng at least uh, kalahate, so it can go up to thirty thousand pesos. But uh, I think the, 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 the investment will suit it, suit it investment in the long term. All right, thank you. Uh, you've mentioned yung mga brands na ito, no? So, uh, follow up question ko actually. So, uh, there are probably different uh, branded uh, instruments uh, which you could use to record yung echolocation cost. Yes, but sir. Have you experienced yung, you know, the, a difference in the kind of in the outputs uh, when you're using? Uh, different brands with the same individual right right uh no we did not we haven't so it's just a matter of uh nung una meron kami nung, nung uh usb ultra mic uh yun yung una naming bat detector mm -hmm. uh actually donated lang yun ni nina engel sa amin eh. so we used that and then uh one came along much much uh, newer much much better much complicated, so you know, you know, so so we didn't look back and try to, mm. to compare, uh, yung, yung ano mas maganda, uh, or mas um, uh, accurate yung cost. I mean, we didn't actually know, how, mm. you can't tell, uh, anyway. So, pero yung, 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 yung capacity to record yung at much higher frequency, of course, uh, the Peterson would be, would be better. Uh, it's also full spectrum. So ibig sabihin, it can record a, a lot of, of information in one call. 
uh, yung, 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 yung power niya, uh, maximum power uh, uh, for the power spectrum. Kasi may mga iba din back detectors that are two-dimensional. Uh, like for example, the Anabat that's been um, uh, one type of Anabat. So hindi niya mare-record yung peak frequency. Mm -hmm. So hindi niya mare-record kung anong yung energy niya in terms of decibel. So uh, although mas maliit yung mga files na nag-generate sa Anabat, uh, unfortunately, medyo kulang. Medyo kulang yung information na nag-generate. For full, full spectrum ano, uh, bat detectors, uh, Nga lang, malaki yung file size, but a lot of information can be generated. All right, thank you. So uh, basically, lang nira recommend the profile viola ay uh, Peterson, no? so Peterson. Yes, sir. But sir, uh, although, Baka naman. Um, <laughs> pero uh, although there are also bad detectors na pwede mo siyang iwan sa field. Na yeah. may, merong casing na uh, um, may, may waterproofing. Uh, I mean, if you're going to survey bats for forest and you want to know the activity. All throughout the night, so there are there are bat box. Uh, there are several bat detectors. Medyo mahal nga lang, oh. around, around mga sixty thousand pesos yata yan, plus taxes and customs taxes. So ganon. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, question from Michael Bigelme, sir. Uh, do the echolocation calls from the same bat species differ at different uh, geographical locations? So basically, nagbabago ba yung echolocation calls niya from uh, the same bat species, but for example, different locations, nag you change ba siya? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, definitely, Mike. I, I've shown you in the, in the some of the slides uh, when when I compared the echolocation calls from Polillo with other localities. Uh, for example, for Hypsiderus uh, pygmaeus, uh, magkaiba yung calls ng Polillo from, I think, from Pakil, Laguna, around difference ng 50 kilohertz in terms of peak frequency. Mm -hmm. uh, for um, uh, other species, Rhinolophus philippinensis, magkaiba din in other localities. So similar to morphological changes, you know, for morphological divergence, uh, when you have, uh, when species are found in different islands, so nagkakaroon din ng morphological changes. Uh, it appears that uh, there's a concurrent change as well in the echolocation call signature. So yeah, meron. And then of course, meron din namang mga species na, well, there's over there's tremendous overlap with each other at several localities. All right. Okay. So siguro ito related yung uh, next question ko sa tinanong ni Sir Mike. Um well, given that na nagbabago nga siya per geographical location, uh, how would uh, how reliable would the uh, echolocation be? Uh, in the field, when you do echolocation recording in the field, uh, to identify uh, microbats reg regardless of location. I'm sorry, Pano. Uh, so, uh, gano siya magiging, gano siya ka reliable if nagbabago yung. Uh, right, right. If, uh, well, it's like uh, since nagbabago yung calls, of course, nagbabago din yung, yung recordings mo. So, how, how would, how, how reliable would be the methodology to identify right, right, properly right, right. identify microbats right, right, when right. you're going through several uh, locations? Right, right, right. So yun na nga, ano na nga doon, um, medyo downfall doon. Uh, what we're seeing right now is there for some species, nag-iiba din yung echolocation cost nila, even for the same at several localities. So this actually shows you na uh, in supports Sometimes na there are changes as well. Gagana talaga ng mga divergences sa mga several localities. So let's say, for example, if you compare to Polillo and let's say Cebu, uh, we, we definitely know for a fact for some species of bats, uh, for example, Philippinensis, it's a species complex based on genetic material, based on morphological information. And then, pwede na siyang singgudahan din ng echolocation ko. So that's why we always emphasize that call libraries are locality-specific. So it's locality-specific. Uh, uh, you cannot apply, uh, ito nga, mm -hmm. you cannot apply yung echolocation call parameters mo for, let's say, Mount Makiling. Uh, you can only apply it to a certain extent. Very limited application when you try to use that for, let's say, Sibuyan, or let's say you use it for Mindanao. You need to uh, have a, a each and every uh, no, uh, specific call libraries per localities. All right, thank you. Uh, 
to our participants. If you see the chat um, uh, put in by Bob Des Fernandez, I think uh, she's uh, she gave the link to batsound.com uh, with regards to the Peterson mic that uh, Sir Flip is mentioning in this case. So if you're interested, just go to your chat box and uh, click on the link. A uh, question from Rai Christie Salve Gomez. Or, um, right. other, Hi, than, right. other than bat detectors, are there uh, like training, regular trainings, which is available for those? Medyo unstable at ang aking internet server. Okay. Sorry. Uh, okay. Well, let's yeah, just wait. Media. Okay. Ayan, ayan. Ayan, ayan, okay. Ayan, okay na, okay na. Okay. I'm sorry. I didn't para, catch the question. Para may hiccup. Anyway, uh, Rai is uh, asking kung merong regular trainings for those uh, who are interested to conduct ecolocation studies. And uh, if this is another question. Is it possible to identify bat calls from recordings that were not directly taken from individual species, which is similar uh, uh, similar to your methods, but taken directly from the field? So for example, uh, they, have, they managed to record uh, calls from another uh, from the same speed uh, 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 but uh, 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 altogether the method is quite differing but uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. would uh, would uh, would your analysis be applicable for those right. uh, 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 recordings uh, uh, that they have uh, uh, taken right so in the first question is training um usually may mga tra online trainings na binibigay uh, from the southeast asian bat conservation regional unit uh, research unit uh, hello, right. Hey, right. I know a member of right nito, no, CB crew. Uh, so, so they usually give online trainings or online webinars. So, I think they've 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 uh, provided I think three or four uh, webinars in the uh, in the past year or so. Uh, but uh, pero sa ngayon parang wala wala yata ngayon. I mean, of course, with, with the pandemic. So, uh, I think that would be a, a very good. If, if everything goes to normal, so sa, sa mga symposiums natin, I think that would be a you know a very good to do a, a training on 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 echolocation calls. So the second question is, uh, although they have echolocation calls taken from bats, pero hindi siya from uh, nahule something like that. Parang ganun yung impression ko. Eh. Mm. Tama ba? Right, for example, right. nagka nagka nagkaiba lang, nagkaiba lang. Kasi for example, this species ay nahuli nyo through and na record nyo through uh, kunyari may tent and then yung uh, nahuli yeah. nila ay na-record lang nila but they use uh, siguro handheld or something uh, like that. It so, could be. It could be. I mean, it's a uh, difference in the manner of recording. Dapat talaga i-mention at start and then try to uh, to, to standardize that. And then, uh, nag -ano si, ano, si, si, si Roy nag-message siya. Uh, hindi siya nahuli daw and then like mm -hmm. from a transit. So, I've done, I tried to do that in other places like Benguet uh, in Siargao and comparing with what I know so far, what 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 in my call in sa akin call library, mahira. Uh, it's very difficult. Uh, you can uh, probably uh, identify it at the generic sa genus level for hypocideros, for rhinolophids, yeah, my constant frequency. Pwede mo identify at the genus level, but at the species level, uh, mahira talaga. For vesper talionids, forget it. I mean, uh, may mahira talaga na pa bago bago. So, ang ano talaga is you need to have a voucher voucher call specimens. And in order to get that, kailangan mo rin hulihin yung panike <laughs> to para i-record po siya. So, yeah. So, you need to have a, you need to capture the bat first and record its call before you can identify. Medyo mahirap eh. Lalo na sa Vesper Talion, it's, it's, it's difficult. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So, a question from Joseph Lemuel Asinas, sir. Um, Question is, what are the primary parameters for rhinolopidae based on Wilkes Lambda? So, uh, actually, hindi lang daw niya na pick up. So, probably. Ah, oh, oh. Uh, yung, yung pinakamagandang ano, uh, so Wilkes Lambda, I peak frequency and then start frequency, I think, or start or end, parang ganon. Uh, pero, yeah, ang pinakamababang mga, mga, mga values would be your peak frequency and uh, the start and end frequency. So, yeah. yung mga, mga temporal characters like duration and pulse interval, medyo hindi eh, mababa, uh, matataas sa mga Wilkes Lambda nila. So, there's not, they're not really very, it appears to be not very useful in, in, uh, in using that as a primary character. In, uh, 
Pero right. for for most of the publications that ano around the world, ang palagi nilang nilalagay is the peak frequency lagi. Okay, thank you. So um, we have uh, several questions ulit dito, but before uh, this is related to question ni ni Rai actually. Uh, I've listed this earlier, sir. Um, you know, sir, what is the reason for the different handling techniques for the rhinolopids, the for the hippocerderosa uh, right, right. diadema, and the and the vespertilionids? Uh, right, right. When you were uh, recording, right. Uh, uh, mga rhinolopids and some hippocerderids magi emit sila ng kole. When they're inside the bag or you're you're, you're holding it in the hand, magi mm -hmm. emit parin sila ng calls. Eh. For vespertilionids, <laughs> wala tahimik ah, yung mga yan. Hindi yan magi emit pagka even inside the bag or, or hawag man. So um, para para makapag elicit ng calls, para ma record namin is may may enclosure para lipan lipan na siya yung 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 So much better if you have a much wider enclosure. Uh, for example, uh, parang greenhouse na uh, paalpasa mo lang siya and then record, record, lipad, lipad lang siya and then it will echolocate. Pero if you try to hold it, well, forget hindi it. Mag hindi, hindi, hindi mag... Uh, ano, hindi mag I see, it. okay. So, um, um, incidentally, sir, why why record adults? Uh, does the call change uh, with age? Yes, or the, yes. Uh, uh, productive uh, uh, stage? Uh, at least for... for, for it, it, it appears that merong pagbabago uh, depending on the age class. So there are some some species na may mga studies would indicate that uh, sub adults or even juveniles have a much much higher frequency compared to adults. I mean, to in order to to eliminate that bias uh, that is associated with age, we have ano na adults na lang ano. And then uh, for sometimes kinatanggal din wow pregnant bats. So this might have a uh, difference in their, their echolocation parameters as well. So in order to be safe and in order to parang konti na lang yung uh, ano mong bias, so adults as much as possible, all adults. Adults. Okay. And then has to have to have to take note of the, set, the the gender of the bat as well. All right. Okay. So uh, we have a question from Timothy Parakikai. Uh, how many consecutive pulses did you use for... Uh, for analysis. Hi, Tim. Uh, I remember at yung SP mo nung ano, no? under King James, nung K Echo, nung by 154. At least five, five or six. Uh, so, pero kung may 10, yeah, sure. Uh, Ira record. So, may, may mga panigyan na talagang pagka nag emit ng pulse, ano mga pulse, tere derecho, it's very beautiful, walang ano. And then there's some na paunti unti lang, na may shadow mahiyain, like sa or dalawa lang na, na pulses. Uh, so at least uh, five or six consecutive pulses ang, ang inaano namin, um, okay. kinukuha namin. Thank you, Timothy. Uh, question from Darwin Ganado. Sir, can we include the echolocation calls uh, for biodiversity assessment and monitoring systems which uh, they conduct oh, yeah, uh, in yeah. every protective area? Right. Yeah, protected yeah, yeah. areas. Anyway, would you recommend this para sa BMB right, or for right, the right. regional I mean, offices? Uh, well, so, so for the so BAMS and for the BMS, I mean, it depends kung, uh, if you've identified for a protected area, if you identified the, 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 these insectivorous bats as a priority species. Alam naman uh, about protected area has their own set of priority species to, to monitor. Of course, parang nga naman uh, cost effective, so you don't have to monitor everything. Uh, sure, why not? Uh, pwede natin, ano yan, isama yan for, 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 for BAMS. Uh, but of course, uh, if you have the money to, to do that, actually, I've already, uh, Jody Sedlock has been proposing this in, since uh, early 2000. I've been proposing this as well, sa, sa BMB. Quanting uh, investment lang sa pera, we're gonna invest sa mga ibang gamit, so you can do that. Uh, although malaking pera nga lang yung magagamit. And then of course, you also have to monitor other species as well, for birds, uh, uh, amphibians, uh, mga reptiles. So, uh, sure, if you have the money, and then of course it also will take training then as well. Medyo, uh, this is not about uh, you know, identification, so pero more of a software, more of a uh, computer based yung pag -ano din nung, nung sa training para to be familiarized with, with, the, with, the, with the software for, for analysis. 
but uh, at this point, look, knowing full well the realities of what's happening in our protected areas, medyo malayo pa, mahirap pa. Medyo mahirap pa. Okay. So, uh, uh, if there are many questions pa ba from the audience because we only have, uh, we have the last uh, here in the chat box from Katrina Erika Manalo. Sir, any personal tips to record bat calls uh, effectively? Uh, yeah. Field, I mean, field experiences and field tips, siguro. <laughs> well, uh, first you have to capture the bats themselves. Uh, you have to have a spe uh, uh, experience or skills in trying to capture these insectivorous bats. Uh, alam naman natin, mga, mga insect eating bats, mga echolocating, uh, they evade mist nets. So you have to be very, very creative in how to capture them in order to, to generate the, the echolocation code to, to begin with. So some of the best areas for, for, for capturing these bats, uh, so caves, for example, or you can use uh, other trapping paraphernalia, paraphernalia like heart prep, so you mm -hmm. can maximize your capture of your bats. And then uh, for recording, um, you need to be familiar with the, with the bat detector and, the, the, and then the software as well, uh, when you're, what, what you're using. And then of course, uh, you try to record in as many manner as possible. So for if you need an enclosure, if it's handheld, preparing free flight, uh, I mean, if you can create a, a flight cage, it's a field, I mean, a greenhouse or something like that, uh, that, would be, that would be great. Uh, so yeah, uh, you, you need, first you need to be very, have experience in capturing the bats themselves. Uh, familiarization with, the, with the, the, the gear, the equipment, and the software, and then recording in all types of manner. Yeah. All right, sure. And this will be this will be probably the last question uh, from Bill Padasas, sir. Can we sure. account the call divergence of species from different localities to environmental factors such as humidity or temperature during the time of the recording? Yeah, possibly. I mean, uh, uh Echolocation calls attenuate with distance. So, sabihin with distance, nababawasan yung, yung frequency and then, of course, yung strength. Uh, some of these attenuations through distance can be contributed by barometric pressure, relative humidity. So, of course, pag uh, maraming high percentage of water is, is in the atmosphere, so medyo babagal yung calls. So, what we're doing here is uh, yung pag-record namin ng call is which is possible parang 12 inches from the, the bat. So we try to standardize that. So detector from the bat. So about medyo malapit or at least 12 inches in distance. So uh, if you can do that, if you can standardize that for all, uh, uh, of all for all your recordings, so medyo mababawasan yung risk of uh, call attenuation or stuff like that. But uh, well, it appears that uh, concurrent yung, yung, yung divergence ng calls niya is concurrent with the, uh, at least with the mor morphological changes and uh, genetic uh, divergence that we're seeing with, particularly with, with species complexes. Eh. So yeah, well, much more if we, uh, when we have studies in, in Southeast Asia, like in Thailand, in uh, Peninsular Malaysia, yung mga same species na with sa atin, uh, magkaiba talaga ang calls. I mean, let's say, for example, Rhinolophus macrotis in the Philippines and uh, in Singapore. Uh, bukod sa, they're different in terms of morphology and genetic sequence. Yung echolocation nila is different as well. All right. Uh, thank you. So, unfortunately, that will be our last question from the general audience. Maraming salamat po sa lahat mga nagtanong. <laughs> And uh, may I request the expert panel, the advisory committee, to turn on their cameras and, if it's okay, their um, their microphones. And I would like to turn over the floor to Dr. Jun Lit to moderate the open forum. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Floor. Uh, so we now have the we now open the screen, the floor to our uh, members of the advisory committee. Uh, may tanong po ba kay, para kay Philip? 
Ah, yes, Ma'am Pao. Hi, Philip. Ang exciting Hello naman po, ang iyong uh, study. Hello po, Ma'am. Yes. Uh -oh. So, i-emphasize lang siguro natin na yung echolocation calls will really vary kasi it's, it's not like sa birds na for communication siya. It's more of sensory, kaya, kaya malaki talaga yung variation, right? And um, yung, yung kinumpare mo, kasi yun yung sasabihin ko sila dapat, tatanong ko sa'yo dapat if you compared with the data of Amberong, um, why did you compare the, I mean, among the call parameters, ang kinumpare mo yung peak frequency? Tama ba? Peak frequency yes, ba? Bakit yun yes, yung kinumpare mo dun sa different uh, studies? Oh, uh, for Amina, yung sa, yung kina Jody kasi yun lang available na information. For, for mm. Amina, under, uh, although marami, uh, seven parameters. Oh, seven yung parameters like kasi. Oh. But uh, the usual, because I also check with the with our paper, kung ano yung so based on the so Wilkes Lambda, kung ano yung mga determinants talaga na, na parameters that would identify. And uh, all of them are peak frequency. Mm -hmm. So ganun din yung ginamit ko rin po uh, mm -hmm. in order to compare. Since yung peak frequency then would actually pro uh, uh, mataas din yung utility niya for for identifying the species po. And then uh actually in, in mga taxonomic papers which actually use uh, echolocation call signatures ma'am, peak frequency po ang kalimitang ginagamit ma'am eh, na ano. So parang yun yung parang pinaka uh, value na <laughs> default value ma'am na ginagamit. Uh -huh. Tapos kailangan uh, locality based yung call library no kasi sabi Yes ma'am, as much as possible. Opo. Mataas yung variation. Ano? Opo. I mean, yeah. even with pakil tsaka sa mat makili sa isang species, uh -oh. kaiba ma'am yung... Uh -oh. Oo. Yung, di ba, handheld mo yung uh, Hipposideros Dye Dima? Yes, ma'am. So, wala kang call na free-flying siya? Wala, ma'am. Sa, sa enclosure, kasi malaki ma'am yung Dye Dima. Ang nakakatakot, di ba? <laughs> uh, medyo, kahit medyo malaki yung tent, malaki mo siya tsaka. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, may may hirap i-handle. Although, uh, nag-try kami mong sa, sa bahay. May isang bahay doon. Although maraming butas. Na bahay, sira-sira ang bahay. Uh, nakalipad din kagad. Na hindi namin naka-record ng maganda. So, ah, okay. uh, so that's the only time nga lang na-handled. So, it's still recording. Pero, yung sa tent, medyo, medyo may hirap. Katakot, ma'am. Katakot. <laughs> baka marami kami. Baka maraming beses makagat. But for small rhino, rhino hipposiderids, Pag-handled, ah, hindi talaga mo mag-init ng calls pag uh, hmm. nasa bag or sa ano. Okay. Sir Lid, isang question na lang. Yes pa. Sige, okay, okay lang. Yung last slide mo, exciting kasi yun, yung emergence ng mga bats. Yes, ma'am. So, yes, ma so nare-record mo din yung abundance nila? Ma'am, ang not population abundance yung by the numbers, but proportional abundance po. So, ang mangyayari po dito is, uh, yung haba nung nag-appear siya sa recording, so, titingnan namin yung proportion na kailan siya nagpakita during mm. that whole recording. Let's say, for example, for for five minutes, ilang minutes po siya nagpakita. So, we, we usually assign percentage. Ah, okay. So, so if it's 100 per... Yes, ma'am. Opo, okay. based on the call. So, not, hindi namin ma-associate, ma'am, with, with the numbers. Although, pwede siya, ma'am, uh, yung ginawa po ni Frex sa thesis niya is Sinabayan po na ah, CCTV yeah. camera oh, oh. and oh, the, the, the bat detector. Pagandahan po kasi sa makiling kasi yung paglabas ng mga paniki, pa isa isa lang po. So talagang since synchronized naman po yung time, so ma-identify. Pero pag, pag yung sa mga malalaking kweba talaga na by the hundreds yung paglabas, medyo mahirap. So okay. yung gagawin ko po ano is uh, proportional abundance. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Silit. Thank you. Uh, next po. Uh, sino ang tulad na magtatanong? Yes, Ma'am Amy. Ayun, Philip. Uh, na Natingnan mo ba? Have you tried exploring? Kasi this is mostly for identifying the, the bats, di ba? And at least yes, partially estimating them. But have you tried recording uh, echolocation to, to reflect behavior such as predation? Kasi kunyari, yung mga moths, they tend to jam Nagbabago ba yung mga terminal buzz nila when they are being jammed by moths? Uh, for the purpose of the um, for this chapter, ma'am, uh, since voucher calls, ma'am, hindi po ma'am eh. Uh, hindi po ma'am ako nakapag-ano ng record ng calls na 
with a certain behavioral context attached to that. So for example, ma'am, for foraging, ma'am, hindi pa ma'am eh. Uh, hindi pa ako nakapag-report, uh, record, or yung, yung feeding buzz, uh, hindi pa rin ma'am. So yung mga behavioral aspects, ma'am, hindi. Uh, I was supposed to, kasama sana doon sa chapter is magta-transit ko sana ako ng mga panigil mm -hmm. ay, na, na pandemic, kaya nagbago yung mga chapters. But ma'am, uh, but I also use these calls para doon sa cave emergence, ma'am. So tinitinan ko, uh, ginagamit yung calls para ma-identify yung mga panigil na lumalabas doon sa keba. It appears that uh, yung may mga ibang species na parang nag uh, undercompensate sila ng call. They're obviously the same species, pero ma'am, uh, iba, mas mabababa yung frequency ng konting-konting iba, uh, medyo mataas. Uh, I've read in some papers that this can be attributed to parang hindi masyadong plug yung soundscape nila. So in order to, to uh, minimize overlaps or yung pag-flight nila or mga ganun ma'am. But uh, other than that, uh, attaching it to behavioral context, hindi pa ma'am. Ma so essentially, it's call characterization. Yun lang na-curious ako kasi baka mamaya mas... Uh... Yes, mas maingay yung ecolocation calls kapag either ginajamba sila kasi in attempt to to treat yes, still find prey mga tipong ganon. Yes, Actually Thank what's you. also interesting ma'am is yung ano yung re reaction nung nung prey mismo nung mod. Oo. Oh, oh. Do sa <laughs> I mean, uh, do they, eh. uh, well, I mean they've been doing that in in, in the US ko ano yung reaction sila Jody tatalian dala yung mod. Uh -uh. <laughs> so mag magre-rec mag mag magpapasabog sila ng mga calls recorded calls uh -uh. from bats na. Yeah, malapit na. So makikita mo rin ma'am na medyo nag-iiba din yung kanilang yung yung calls from the bots. Tapos minsan nagta-turn silang ganoon. <laughs> medyo talagang nakakagandang tingnan mo. Very exciting, very exciting one by okay. Actually in relation to Ma'am Amy's question, naisip ko nga na Mas excited kaya yung call pag maraming moth na lumalabas o yes, pag walang mahuli pa. Ba? And then, about, yes. Uh, definitely, ma'am, uh, nakapag-record na ako ng mga feeding buzzes, uh, especially on windy night, uh, yung pag maulan, magamo-gamo po, sa, kahit sa bahay, sa baba lang ng bahay namin. So, iba't ibang, ano, iba't ibang species ng mga panike, nag-iiba yung mga feeding buzz na talaga. Napakasinsin ng kanilang mga calls uh, base do sa pag-approach nila nung nung gamo-gamo po. Ah. Okay. Okay. okay Tapos na po si Ma'am Jimmy. Ma'am Ma'am Jimmy tanong ka. Hay, ma naka-mute ka Ma'am Ji. Curious lang ako. Ah, gandang hapon po Ma'am. Doon kay uh, data ni James. Yes Ma'am. Ah uh, ano yun paano nakapag-iwan ba siya ng mga hand uh, yung mga uh, written description or written parameters doon sa iyong uh, doon sa kanyang mga recordings um, hindi ma'am uh, recordings yung raw recordings po So paano mo siya ginamit inanalyze uh, mo Yes ma'am so man Ikaw ang nag-analyze Kami po ni ako ako at si Kirk Oh <laughs> okay So so sa iyo para raw data so mga ma-echolocation calls lang po yun So yung pagkuha po kasi ng mga parameters ay doon sa software so manually po yun so ipo-point ni cursor and then may mga other characters na for pipindot nila po calls characterization or yung pag malaman ko ano yung power spectrum mga ganun po so otherwise, ma'am, kami po yung nag nag derive ng mga parameters, ma'am, kay yung kay James po. Kasi ang uh, yung usefulness nung ginawa ni James, may i-publish ba ninyo yon uh, with with the with your analysis and etc. Ma'am, definitely for 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 ma'am for the paper uh, for chapter three, which I, I tend to publish. Definitely po, ma'am, kasama po si James po dito. At least for Pero for, for, for. yung work mismo yung, ni James. Ma'am, unfortunately po, wala po. Hindi, uh, kaya ba ninyo? Siguro ma'am yung, yung uh, si Buyan will be one. Si Buyan. Kaya ninyo ma-publish? I, I, I think so, ma'am. Given the, ma the, the focus, of course, kung kaya namin uh, totoo. Definitely, ma'am. It's, 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 it's uh, in the pipeline, ma'am. Definitely, we're, we're also attracting uh, mga newly graduate students na 
pwede rin po silang pwedeng ibigay yung datos ni James some of them at least uh, pwedeng ibigay sa kanila sila maggawa ano uh, lalo na po pag sa mga thesis ngayon undergraduate na bawal po magfield um, i think uh, i don't know how to ask permission uh, kung pwede, sino po bang caretaker ng ng datos ni James uh, Uh, technically, it's the Museum of Natural History. Museum, kasi yes, ginam- ginamit ay facilities at saka time ng museum. Eh. So, of course, ma'am. So, if we can have uh, a ghost signal from from the museum, of course, from Sir Jun, who was the the, the advisor sa MS po, uh, pwedeng, 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 ma'am. Definitely. Uh, po. Uh, kasi yung mismo yung thesis niya from Sibuyan, hindi pa rin po na-publish, of course, uh, kung ipapublish mo siya, siya po yung main author. Yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ang ano ko doon ay sayang naman yung lahat of course, ng ma'am. trabaho yes, yun if yes, you ma'am. will not continue. Uh, of probably except uh, y- yung work niya sa Sibuyan will be jointly uh, take, uh, curated by the museum plus uh, kasi he was under IBS when he did the thesis so that's also part the IBS and then also uh, yung nag-fund ng kanyang ng kanyang thesis sa Sibuyan but all the rest of his work ay uh, by default museum ang may may hold caretaker ng estate kang ng estate sayang kasi yung na trabaho yes, ma'am. opo ma'am opo ma'am uh... ang isang question ko is yung data mong ito, sabi mo kasi location specific, can be used only in your study. Yeah, probably, ma'am. I mean, we don't still don't have uh, information from, let's say, Real Quezon. Baka since malapit po siya, baka pwede pong gamitin. But since uh, we don't have much ano eh, uh, call libraries, actually, in order to compare, Uh, yung utility nung aking I aming mean, data na gamitin sa iba pong localities. So, as of now, ma'am, yes, ma'am, uh, polilio specific po ito. Uh, I mean to say, in terms of uh, using it as a parameter for taxonomy, it could be location specific pa rin. Most, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. So, if you have, so, let's say, I will like to describe yung mga populations of Rhinolophus macrotis from several islands in the Philippines. So, which actually genetic sequence would show na different sila, morphological, ma'am. Uh, Siyempre, ma'am, yung echolocation cost dapat may species, uh, locality specific din po, ma'am. Kasi nagkakaiba rin din po. Uh, I'll be very interested yung chapter 4 mo. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Kung saan mo magagamitin yung iyong data. Uh, yes, I have ma'am. no yes, more ma'am. questions. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you, Philip. Salamat po, ma'am. Uh, my problem si Sir Nelson, so I will read uh, what he sent by messenger. Uh, he said it's a nice chapter to link echolocation study with the other chapters. And then uh, he's also he also sent three questions. Siguro, yung second question mukhang na-miss niya yun dun sa introduction. So I will not read anymore the second question. Pero yung first question niya, uh, can there be some hints from their calls about their behavior in view of physiological, food, uh, social, and threats to habitat? Uh, in terms of behavioral context po, um pwede nating malaman sir eh. oh, so depending on the behavioral context may minsan nagiging specific din yung calls let's say for example social calls within the roost so you know, recognition between intraspecies or between pup and uh, the mother bat meron ding distinct na echolocation call uh, na, 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 na characters na na binibigay, binibigay sir but in term uh, it has not yet been um, documented in terms of what are the changes in the echolocation cost structure in relation to environment or in, in relation to disturbances. Uh, wala, wala, I haven't really come across uh, any papers on that. But it would be, I mean, if we can do a fine-tuned, high-resolution um, call characterization of, of uh, in several disturbance types, 
So ano yung mga my, if there are subtle changes, that will be great. So, but in other behavioral contexts, uh, aggression, uh, sometimes aggression, uh, feeding definitely, yung feeding bus, uh, may nagkakaiba po. So, okay. Uh, the third question ay medyo related na dun sa naipaliwanag na ni Ma'am Pao kanina, the difference between bird calls and uh, bat echolocation calls. But uh, maybe you can answer for practical purposes nga naman. Cell, sabi niya, cell phones can record sounds of birds, uh, but will there, what will this, uh, kung sakali bang ma-record siguro sa cell phone in the future, will this be useful in maybe, kasi nga naman mahal daw yung bat detector, bat recorder. Uh, well, opo. Would be yung, the possibility ganon. Yung recording apparatus do sa cell phones po ay are only capable of recording sounds na audible up to 20 kilohertz but beyond that ultrasonic frequencies uh, wala na po hindi, hindi kakayanin. Hindi po kaya. Uh, mga 50 kilohertz ay hindi po. Um, but there are uh, um, hardware medyo maliit lang um Ano po ito? Ecometer ang tawag. Uh, kinakabit po sa mga cellphones or sa tablet na around mga pinakamura po yata is 13,000 pesos. Pero medyo limited yung ability niya. Uh, nakagamit na po ako nun. Ang problema nga lang po is uh, pwede lang siyang makarecord ng mga constant frequency bats. Pero po yung mga frequency modulated like uh, vespertilionids ay hindi po. Hindi kakayanin. So... May limited utility. Although mura, pwede siya ikabit sa cellphone, pwede kung gano. But uh, the utility is uh, not uh, complete. Parang kanun. Okay. Uh, may tanong pa ang ating Ma'am ma Amy, Ma'am Pao, at Ma'am G. May tanong pa ba kayo bago ako mo? Oh, wala na po. Okay. Uh, wala na po. Oh. Wala na. Eh, wala naman akong malaking tanong kasi mas uh, kumbaga bilang magkakasama sa field lalo na pag sa pulido ay na-appreciate ko yung ginagawa ni Philip. And uh, uh, mas ma-appreciate natin ito pag, ma pag mababasa natin o maririnig yung, yung uh, susunod na chapter pero hindi na uh, siguro sa ibang seminar na yon hindi na yun required. Uh, like uh, it's actually related to what what James also did for Sibuyan, where yung considering the clutter, yung medyo yung bang iba yung pagkakaiba ng set of calls sa isang open area at sa isang uh, medyo good forest cover yon something like that, and therefore. Uh, pag nag-record na si Philip ng emergence patterns uh, and considering na medyo good forest pa yung nasa may entrance ng cave 3 4 uh, yes, that would be interesting also and in the future maybe these are these are possible areas uh, yun nga ano ba pagkakaiba ng ng call nila frequencies kung kung maraming yun nga emergence ng Gamo gamo or moths or yung termite winged termites, kung open area versus good forest, and then uh, ano kaya ay total nagmo monitor naman not not this in, not in this dissertation but maybe in the future uh, kapag nagmo monitor ba ng virus load alin ba mahab pag mataas ba ang virus load ng ba ng beta coronavirus ay may iba kaya ang tunog niya versus a yeah, those are those are interesting hindi uh, ko alam <laughs> ba? baka makikita mo na ay wag natin hawakan niya marami yung beta coronavirus na <laughs> ganto ang call niyan <laughs> and then yun uh, actually yung greater um, relevance niya ay mas makikita sa ecology, ecological studies. Yes, sir. And, uh, I really appreciate your efforts because uh, this part of your dissertation provides the 
relevant, uh, highlighting the relevance of taxonomy of proper identification to community ecology studies. So in that case, uh, I don't I don't have any. Thank question. you, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, one thing, sir, I ano ko lang, shout out ko ulit, sir, sir, sir Tara, yung, uh, uh, yung aming border sa baba. I mean, uh, nagsimula lang na tinuruan ko lang dati magpano mag, ano, pals ngayon, hindi hamak, mas magaling pa sa akin mag, mag, mag gumamit ng mga software ng mga, ng mga sa bad detector. So, he really helped me a lot, especially with the statistical analysis and the uh, call characterization. So, shout out lang. Estudyante rin natin yan, sir. <laughs> yes. So, it's a, it's also, Pag magagaling ang ating sadyante, it's a reflection of us also as good teachers. Di ba, Ma'am G? Of course. Siguro. <laughs> si, Amina, si Amina Amberong po, yung sadyante po namin ni Ma'am Pao. Yes, yeah, so Ma'am. proud. Ang galing, galing. Yeah. Galing. Wow. Kapag-publish, unang-unang kita ito, man. Very nice. Okay, so kung wala nang tanong ang ating mga kasama, uh, let me give back the floor to Floor. Thank you, Sir June. So uh, everyone, maraming salamat po sa inyong uh, pakikinig. I hope meron kayong mga nakuha ng additional information from the questions and the answer uh, during the expert uh, panel review. So uh, before we end the program, let me just uh, share my slide. And with that, we are uh, providing this, uh, we are giving this certificate of recognition to our speaker, Professor Philip A. Alviola, uh, for serving as resource person. And it reads the certificate of recognition is given to Philip A. Alviola for serving as resource person during the 2021 biodiversity seminar entitled Ecolocation Call Characterization of 10 Microchiropteran Bat Species from Caves and Karst Forest of Polilio Island, Philippines, held today, June 1, from 1 o'clock to 3 p.m. Philippine Standard Time via Zoom. So, and in witness whereof, the signature of our director, Dr. Marian P. De Leon, is hereby affixed. Um, please uh, visit our website, mnh.uplb.edu.ph, or write us at mnh.uplb at up.edu. Uh, that ph we are on facebook twitter uh, of course youtube and instagram like follow us and subscribe on our social media accounts uh, just look for the handle uplb museum and we're also uh, in trip advisor and wikipedia so again maraming salamat po to all our audiences and uh, to our expert panel maraming salamat